This is how I consistently study for cybersecurity. So you probably already know this, but continuous learning and learning new skills, learning new tools, learning new concepts is a huge part of being a cybersecurity professional, especially when you're trying to keep up with news and different attacks and trends that are happening in different sectors. And part of your job is to be aware of these things and not necessarily be a subject matter expert in every single topic, but at least know where to go for information as well as, as, well as keep up with the foundational skills that are necessary for a cybersecurity role. So in this video, I wanna go over a few things things that I personally do to kind of keep me to kind of keep me in track in terms of learning new cybersecurity skills, keeping up with trends and just different news cycles across the board because let's face it, cybersecurity is always changing and evolving and it really feels like every day there's a new hack or a new vulnerability that is buzzing and the ones from last week are like ancient history. So the first thing I want to discuss is a slightly obvious one, but it is keeping up with cybersecurity news. Now this really depends on how you prefer to take in news. Before getting into cybersecurity, I was not a person who read, you know, news articles every morning i didn't i do not keep up with a majority of the news outlets that are out there but i do think that specifically for cybersecurity, you, you do need to keep up with the different vulnerabilities different exploits the different patches and remediations that are out there or maybe your company may be targeted by a nation state and keeping up with cybersecurity news around that is important some companies have cybersecurity teams specifically for keeping up with these things and those are typically going to be their cybersecurity threat intelligence but not every company has a specific cyber threat intelligence cyber intelligence team so maybe your job as a cybersecurity professional in any role to just spend some time every day perusing through different news articles especially looking at specific sources it doesn't have to be you know an hour two hours every morning looking at news because it can really be an endless rabbit hole at that point but personally i have an rss feed where i kind of have a dump of all of the security blogs and news outlets that i follow and the most important ones kind of bubble up to the top and those are the ones that i read and again i don't spend hours on this because i also do have external alerts outside of my rss feed but oftentimes you'll find things that may impact your organization through these news articles and, and just through perusing that you otherwise wouldn't have known about if you weren't keeping up with cybersecurity news and threats, which honestly changes all the time. And because attackers are always using different exploits and, and ways to take advantage of specific vulnerabilities, you can also learn new things just by reading these cybersecurity news articles. The next thing I want to discuss is professional development. So this is specifically time set aside on a weekly basis or bi-weekly basis where you're actually spending time learning new skills. One thing that I've learned in my very short career of three and a half years in cybersecurity is the fact that if you don't carve out time for your personal development and for learning new skills, then it's never going to happen. And at some point in your career, you're going to want to make that next step or go for the next role or next promotion. And the things that you need to get there are not the skills that you're using in your everyday currently. The skills that you're using on your day to day is perfect for the job that you're doing, but it may not be enough for the job that you want to do in the future. So professional development is one of the most important things that you should be adding to your calendar. Maybe add like a two hour a week block on your calendar for like Friday afternoons or something and just spend that time trying to learn new skills, looking at different tools that you might want to learn, um, maybe doing a few hack the box or try hack me challenges. There's a lot of things that you can do in a few hours and while it doesn't sound like a lot on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, over time, over a year, you're going to pick up those new skills and eventually they're going to help you down the line, boost your resume, get that new job, maybe start a new project at work. And a lot of times it ends up being on your own responsibility to go for those professional development experiences and opportunities, which kind of sucks to say, but but of course there are also companies out there who kind of provide you some time, sometimes it's called like 10% time on professional development or working on a side project or learning a new skill that you want to learn. And if you have something like that at your company, then I would definitely take advantage of it. Some companies also have professional development budgets where you're able to spend money on training courses or, or maybe textbooks and things like that, or even studying for a certification which is the next thing I want to talk about. And I feel like this is one of the original ways to kind of convince yourself to study and learn new skills. So if you're someone who is studying for a certification in cybersecurity, then you know a lot of time goes into it. A lot of times there can be hands-on labs and hands-on training that you have to do. And other times it's textbook reading and, and good old fashioned studying. So depending on the type of certification that you're getting, studying for a certification is a great way to kind of help keep you on track. I know some people who spent a very long time specifically just studying for a certification because they always want to be in the flow of continuous learning. 
So even if they already have certifications under their belt, they may start studying for their next certification months in advance, like six to eight months in advance, and just slowly soaking in that information so that they keep their pattern of, of continuous learning and it doesn't hurt when you go back and start studying for a certification from scratch because your brain is already used to, okay, we're already studying XYZ amount a week. So it's not like digging into a textbook after years of not opening a textbook for a long time. And that was also something that I was previously doing when I was trying to study for my next cybersecurity certification, which at this time I'm currently debating what certification I want to go for next. But it really is just a great way for you to just sit down, spend some time reading a textbook. And even if it doesn't necessarily lead to a certification down the line, for example, if you don't decide to take that certification, if it's not right for you in your career path, it's so nice that you're able to study for the certification and at least have that foundational knowledge, whether it be new topics or concepts that you haven't learned before, or even just brushing up on topics that you have known but are getting a refresher on, which both of these are great for your career regardless. And this next thing I can't emphasize enough, and that is learning with the team or with a group of people. And I guess it's kind of similar to those mastermind groups where people kind of get together um, once a month or something and talk about a specific topic and brainstorm different ideas or if you're just like in college or boot camp and you're studying together for an exam it's kind of like that but in a professional environment and personally me and my team at work actually have kind of like a recurring meeting where we meet up and discuss certain things and we're all learning the same topic we'll go over any questions a person on my team also leads the call so we're kind of it's kind of like we're in school again where we have class and we're learning about a subject and i really like that environment because because it's a lot more open than a class because we're just able to discuss as a group with each other with any questions or confusion or anything that pops up and and the amount of motivation it takes to study I know is a lot and I'm not saying that every single day I wake up ready to you know study for my next certification or ready to study for this next this next cybersecurity topic or or learn how to use a new cybersecurity tool um, you definitely don't wake up every single day like this but if you're able to work with someone else and you know have someone hold you accountable so you're not just reading and studying on your own and because in that way whether you're doing passive or active learning it's definitely not as interactive as reading or learning something with a group of people even just one other person this is another reason why paired programming is so successful because you're able to kind of bounce ideas off each other or learn twice as fast with more people in the group because one person might notice something that another person doesn't and vice versa so it really is just learning at a faster pace when you're able to go with a group of people so if you're planning on learning a new cybersecurity security skill maybe you want to try a try hack me maybe you want to do one hack the box challenge a week then getting a friend you know to tag along with you is really helpful just to be able to work together and talk through problems and kind of have like a rubber ducky so that you're able to move even faster without being stuck in your own head because a lot of times that is where people get stuck for cybersecurity and kind of tend to give up and the last thing i want to discuss is time-based capture the flags and hands-on learning so i've touched on this a little bit with try hack me and hack the box but if you're someone who is really trying to challenge themselves, I would try for a beginner CTF or capture the flag tournament. These are nice because they typically have a time limit of a few days to a few weeks and you can learn a lot in that time. But because there's a time limit put by the organization that's running the capture the flag, it makes it a whole lot more urgent, I guess, to get you to start and do these capture the flag challenges rather than, you know, just doing a normal hack the box or try hack me challenge, which, which typically don't have those do by midnight time limits. This is also a great thing to do with friends if you're someone who is just starting out a lot of capture the flags do have team-based events while others may be solo obviously you don't have to do it with a team but i do think that it's a great learning experience and there's a lot of discord channels um red teamers on twitter uh different walkthroughs and reddit communities and there's just so many communities in the cybersecurity space that do capture the flags that that kind of help you feel like you're doing this together with a group of people even if you don't have someone in your immediate friend circle that wants to do a capture the flag with you regardless i think it's a great way to learn new skills and sharpen the ones that you already have especially because capture the flags and events like this and challenges like this can look awesome on your resume if you are starting to apply for jobs in cybersecurity or are looking for the next role in cybersecurity all right so hopefully this video helped provide insight on how i consistently study for cybersecurity and feel like I'm always learning something new even though I'm not you know opening cracking open a new textbook every few months 
I think a good mix of professional development and you know hands-on training and just good old studying is a really good combination especially if you're doing it with a group of people that can hold you accountable and can also just make the whole studying process a lot more fun than than the typical solo studying that you would do in college or for classes so hopefully this video was helpful to you guys let me know in the comments below if you guys have any questions about how i study for cybersecurity as well as any tips or additional advice that you might have for someone who is currently getting started in cybersecurity and maybe wants to get a leg up and, and get to that next level thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i'm posting videos every single day for the month of december but i normally post videos on wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye but not every company has a but not company every